You're watching B2B Cambodia's Legal Update, where we delve into the latest legal changes and developments in Cambodia's laws and regulations. Today, we'll be speaking with Ms. Sok Seka, Managing Partner at Satalai Law Office, about the incentives under Cambodia's investment law. Hi, thank you so much for speaking with us today. So today, we'll be discussing the investment law here in Cambodia and specifically how that might uh, be useful or helpful for foreigners. So could you maybe highlight some of the laws in Cambodia regarding investment that help to make a more attractive investment environment for uh, foreign businesses? So actually, uh, Cambodia has a previous law on investment in 1997, but in 2021, we have the new law on investment and was implemented by the sub-decree 138 in 2023. Mm -hmm. So that law on investment like before, we have only the qualified investment project, meaning that you have the project, you that you are the investor, you having you apply the project to the mm -hmm. CDC, which is a Council for Development of Cambodia, and then having the qualified investment project status to really access to incentives. So that's from the start. Mm -hmm. And that's under the 1997 law. But the new law, they offer other new things. Mm -hmm. They have QIP the same, but they have expanded QIP. Expanded QIP means you have a QIPs already, but you want to expand your business operation or expand the both the scope, the scale, but it's related to your previous QIP. So you can ask for expansion on that. And then you have the other one as uh, investment guarantees and protection. And could you also break down maybe what some of the main benefits are mm -hmm. under the Cambodian law and investment uh, that was updated in 2021 and the sub decree which was implemented last year under the new law and as well as the sub decree we we have a uh, incentive and then we can divide it incentive to basic incentive and additional incentive and special incentive yes. so under the basic incentive we have two options for the investor to opt for like one option is income tax exemption so in the income tax exemption, they will be provided based on the category of the investment. So some category of investment can have the nine years incentive, six years or three years. And then after the lapse of income tax exemption period, it means that you don't jump up to 100% mm -hmm. full of tax. They have the scaling, the, they call it progressive tax rate. Mm -hmm. So they have 25% for the first two years, 50% for the next two years, and 75% for the last mm -hmm. two years. And if you have the QIP, you can have exemption for prepayment tax and minimum tax, minimum tax, and as well as exemption of export tax. Mm -hmm. This is option one. And the option two that you can choose is a special depreciation. So the special depreciation, meaning that you can, you can have 200% deduction for specific expense for up to nine years based on the investment categories, the same. And then uh, exemption of prepayment of income tax, like I mentioned earlier, and exemption of minimum tax, the same, and exemption of export tax. So uh, the differences of option one and option two is one, income tax exemption, but the other one is special depreciation. You can have additional incentive, which is uh, the VAT exemptions for the purchase uh, locally produced inputs uh, and deductible expense at the rate of 150% for certain activities because the government want to encourage those kind of activity for the development of the country and human resource and as well as the research and development and exemption of custom duty and specific tax and VAT for import of construction materials. And the special incentive, which is uh, different from additional and basic incentive, if uh, your business or your investment have high potential contribution to the national economic development, you may receive a special incentive as a somehow discretion of the CDC. So if you could compare with neighboring countries, how would you say Cambodia's uh, investment law is? Um, so in terms of uh, law, it is it is friendly, mm -hmm. but it just uh, how the laws itself uh, talks to the operations. It's uh, another issues because uh, right now there are some country they start moving up on the ESG and circular economy. Mm -hmm. So it means that uh, it needs certain other effort uh, beyond law. It needs other sectoral laws to really support on that, like environmental law, um, those kind of uh, the the recent law, like we mentioned about corporate governance and um, social contribution, those kind of things to really help uh, putting a very minimum benchmark for the ecosystem to provide uh, equivalent support on the ESG 
uh, requirement of all the commitment on the net zero in the future because mm -hmm. we focus more on the production for export. So if the production inside cannot meet the requirement of the order on the commitment for export of free uh, carbon and so uh, probably uh, the local manufacturer may uh, face the risk of uh, losing orders. Mm. So that's why I guess uh, those kind of things that we need to, to upscale a bit. What would you say is still needed in the investment law in terms of future developments? What are the main things when you speak to your clients, for example, um, that you think could be added to the law to make things smoother for everyone mm. and to kind of help make it a better business environment? I can say that um, within the law itself, uh, it's quite good in terms of a concept. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to implementations, you need a certain precisions mm -hmm. on things, right? So like you, like the law mentions on um, good for economic development, for special incentive, these kind of activities. And so, so it just uh, need, I guess, a further regulation or so to really define each term. Mm -hmm. So the company, the investor themselves can understand. And then the other one is uh, from what CDC do right now, the law do right now is very good on having the one-stop service, meaning that you just apply to CDC and then uh, all the process will come out through. And then it just like, after that, you, you need to notify GDT and so, so it just, uh, uh, how to really uh, looking on the compliance obligations of the company, mm -hmm. meaning that uh, if it won't stop service from the start, so how should the information and reporting flowing between the public authorities uh, rather than having the private company uh, going from one by one for each process of approval or each reporting obligations. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time today. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Yeah, thank you so much. This was B2B Cambodia's legal update. Thanks for watching. Join us next time as we continue to unpack Cambodia's laws and regulations.